It's a burning fire in my soul. We can all use more love to save the world. And if you feel that joy in your heart, hold on, don't let it part. This is Nature Ellis, and you're tuned into Big Stone Television with the vision. A very pleasant good afternoon ladies and gentlemen welcome once again to big stone television here we are again in the series of gone too soon today ladies and gentlemen i'm going to bring to you an artist that is known as jalayan or jalide we're talking about the great patrick francis one of the leading djs and record producers during the 70s the work of Patrick Francis, a.k.a. Jaloid, a.k.a. Jalayan, is still sadly underappreciated. In 1959, like so many young hopefuls before and after him, Patrick Francis born the 29th of August 1947 at Point L. St. Catherine, headed for Kingston where he settled in the infamous Trenchtown ghetto. Surrounded by musicians and artists including Easy Snapping, Theophilus Beckford and Eric Montemaris, Pat was inspired to become a singer and he formed the group named The Eagles, who recorded What an Agony for Studio One in 1966. He returned to Studio One in 1969 as one of the mediators alongside Fitzroy Bonnie Simpson for Darling Here I Stand and the group found success later that year with Look Who A Bus Style for Rupi Edwards. He then became a salesman for Rupi, booming success records, where you always find the latest and the greatest shop and label for two years. Through his work as Rupi salesman, Pat got to know everybody who was anybody in Kingston record business, and he approached Lee Scratch Perry with a view to recording but inspired by the works of Big Youth, Pat Francis decided that he would now start DJing instead of singing, as well as cutting a few sides with Scratch, including The Llama, credited to The Upsetters. He also began to produce for his own teen label, based at Lee Perry's former shop at 36 Charles Street, where his DJ recordings were credited to July. The biggest hits on team came with Pat Francis' outstanding addition to two of reggae music's most popular and most virgin rhythms ever. Horace Andy's interpretation of Bill Witters' Ain't No Sunshine and Shenley Duffus' Take On, William Bell's stock classic I've Got To Be Your Lover, known as To Be A Lover, but better known as Have Some Mercy. After Dara Wilson defining cut of the rhythm for Ainsley Folder, Scratch had given Jelloid use of the rhythm after he had voiced the Lama, and he would return to these two rhythms, together with the beautiful Shame and Pride by the Mighty Diamonds, released on the team label in 1975. Time and time again. Later that year, Jelloid introduced the Diamonds to Jojo Oakham at Channel One and as they say 
the rest is history. Early 1976, Lee Perry decided to put together a DJ album for release through his international distribution deal with Allen Records in London. His first choice was Jawoosh, currently riding high on a wave of popularity through his recording with Rupi Edwards. But Woosh was not over keen. Scratch recruited Jalide, but decided to rename him Jalion. Columbia Kali, a thoughtful major long playing exercise, took a couple of weeks to complete and remain on the UK reggae album charts for months, capturing the dread mood of the times. However, a picture of Lee Perry in the back arc and the back of the album cover wrongly assumed that Jalion was a DJ nom the mic for scratch, a golden opportunity for Jalai to consolidate his reputation as one of the period's most impressive DJs and was therefore lost and his prowess and commanding presence on the microphone are, in consequences, nowhere near as well known or as highly regarded as they deserve to be. His production skills are another matter and Jaloyd's work as a producer has always been both well respected and highly regarded. He continued to maintain his hard-won independence through release on the team label in Jamaica and internationally and Virgin's frontline label. In 1979, he licensed a collection of dubs to a selection of his top team rhythms built by the revolutionaries and mixed by Prince Jammy to Greensleeves record in London. One of the earliest released in Greensleeves, Goldmine Dub, not only helped towards building the latest reputation, but also bolstered the standing of dub music, which by now was erroneously regarded in some quarters as a spent force. Patrick Jalide, Jalion Francis, was tragically shot dead in Kingston on the 2nd of June. 1999. Patrick Jalloyd, Jalion, gone too soon. It is ironic, ladies and gentlemen, that we keep losing our great ones to some of our own. An artist once said, we don't build great men, we kill great men. Why did Jalion have to go? But the rest is history. We continue to mourn the loss of the Great One. And at this particular time, I'm saying condolences to the family of Jaloyd Jalion Francis. We know he's resting in Zion with the rest of the greats. Jamaica for far too long, we ignored or forget the Great Ones who have helped to pave the way for reggae music. And through this forum, I will continue to uplift and highlight and put on a pedestal those great unsung heroes who have gone way too soon. Gone before us, never to be seen again. But guess what? Their music, their melodies and their voice will live on for our lifetime and many lifetimes to come. July, you came, you saw and you definitely conquer. We will miss you, we'll always hold you dear to our heart, and may the Almighty continue to bless your family, your children, your children, children, your next of kin. And we know that one day, we'll all meet up on the glorious side, where reggae music will stand supreme. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and share this video. And if you have not yet subscribed to Big Stone channel, now is the time to do so. Thank you so much.